a man was told by a doctor, you're pregnant. This was incredibly confusing for him. It turned out that the man was transgender. He had a sex change operation five years ago, but maybe something went wrong. So now the man accidentally got pregnant. What's worse, doctors found a tumor in the man's body. As a result of the pregnancy, the tumor had doubled in size in just a weeks, which meant the doctors would have to surgically remove it. Sean said he was familiar with this kind of case. He bragged about the high cancer rate in this hospital and was then kicked out by the director. Liam, is that really an appropriate thing to say in this situation? It's true. Liam calmed the two couples down and told them that Sean is still young. He was just kidding around. Then she told them that they had options for treatment. One was to terminate the pregnancy to reduce the hormones effect on the tumor, after which they could remove the tumor more safely. The second option was to save the baby by doing a duranasal surgery. The surgery would start in the nose, but it wasn't as safe of a treatment and could even lead to the man's death. The person, who was once a woman and now a man, thought long and hard. And finally, with thoughts of parenthood in his heart, he decided to give birth to the child, but his fiancée was against it. What if something went wrong? And when the baby was born and finds out it has the fathers, how embarrassing would that be? Didn't his partner understand? Even so, the man stayed resolute. The fiancé finally couldn't stand it any longer, so he turned around and left the hospital room. The operation was about to begin. At that moment, the fiancé finally calmed down and remembered how much the man had paid for his sex change. He also realized his own selfishness. They talked to each other and finally got back together. But at that moment, the man said his eyes were blurry. Sean rushed forward and asked the man to look at his fingers. The man says he still couldn't see, which meant the man's tumor is getting bigger and pressing on his optic nerve. The operation couldn't be delayed any longer, or the man would go blind and it would have to be a craniotomy now. The risks of surgery had doubled. Liam could only advise the man to abort the baby and try the safer treatment. But the man shook his head. He didn't want to change his decision so easily, because in his heart, he was already a father. So the man was put on the operating table and Sean opened his skull. He was careful with the knife to make sure he didn't accidentally kill the man. But something still happened. It turned out that air had somehow penetrated the blood vessels in the brain, causing the man's blood pressure to drop. Sean quickly suggested a solution. The doctors could tilt the operating table, turn the man's head upside down, and insert a catheter to drain the air bubble. After all the efforts of the doctors, the man's condition has finally stabilized and the operation was successfully completed. When the man woke up, his fiance had been waiting for a long time, and now he couldn't wait to tell him the good news. Now that the man's health was fine, he just needed to wait for the baby to be born and they could build a whole family. This girl is only 14 years old, but her back is like an 80 year old's. It scared Sean the first time he saw it. Interesting. It turns out the girl had been practicing gymnastics since she was a kid. But today she suddenly felt as if all the bones in her body had been removed. After examination, the doctor found that the girl had badly injured her leg. It had been two months since she hurt it, but it still hadn't healed. It wasn't normal. Then Sean found some bruises inside the girl's mouth. That was a sign of an eating disorder. Ultimately, the girl confessed that athletes often had to go on diets to stay in shape. At this point, the girl's father and coach said the girl usually eats konjac noodles, a kind of food that is very difficult to digest. In truth, it's harmful to the body and has been banned in some countries. Sean had to rush the girl to the MRI and the coach frowned see in his tracks because he ate a lot more of the noodles than the girl. Sure enough, the film showed that the girl's intestines had been blocked by fibers. She would have to have surgery to remove it because of osteoporosis caused by pernutrition. Though, after the operation, after the surgery, the girl would never be able to do gymnastics again. Sean told the girl what they had found. The girl and the coach obviously didn't think it was gonna be this bad. They had a big competition in three months. So they had a question. Could the surgery be postponed? Sean said that it could, but it would definitely increase the risk of the surgery. It could even lead to the girl's sudden death. But for the sake of her dream, the girl still chose to postpone the operation. Unsurprisingly, though, an accident was about to happen. The girl suffered a sudden cardiac arrhythmia and had to be sent to the operating room. Although she was successfully resuscitated, they had to figure out just what was going on. She's only 14 years old, after all, but she had a series of illnesses. After many tests, the doctors found that there was an unknown drug in her system. Under the doctor's persistent questioning, the girl finally told the truth. It turns out she didn't like her flat figure, so she was taking hormones. This may be ruled as doping, though, and it could get the girl disqualified from the competition. When her coach found out about this, he was so angry that he had a heart attack. When the doctors checked, it turned out that the large amount of konjac noodles he consumed had caused his esophagus to rupture. It was harder to save him. When the girl went to his hospital room, 
He started cursing at the girl and summed up his perspective into sentences. Body image is nothing. Your dream of gymnastics is the most important thing. At this moment, the girl finally vented all her grievances. Since the start, gymnastics was just her coach's dream because the girl's deceased mother was also a gymnast. So she practiced under her father's guides. And she kept practicing and practicing. But finally, she wanted to have her own life. Still, she was scolded by the coach. It was unfair to her. Hearing the girl's confession, her father finally realized his mistake and immediately changed his mind. As her guardian, he asked the doctor to operate on the girl and repair her spine. By doing so, though, the girl wouldn't be able to participate in the next game. So the girl became even more angry now. It was too late for him to do his duty as a father. You're fired, coach. Not long after he left, though, the coach fell critically ill again. The doctors tried their best to save him during the operation, but all sorts of things kept going wrong. The coach finally fell into a coma and the doctor had no choice but to tell the girl the news. She found out that the coach had been eating the noodles with her and he hadn't missed any training either, so his physical condition was the same as her own. That's when the girl realized her father didn't want her to end up like him. That's why he wanted her to have the surgery. In the end, both her body and her dreams, in her father's eyes, were not as important as his daughter's life. So the daughter, with tears in her eyes, made peace with her father. When the coach woke up from his long coma, the girl hugged him right away. After that, she decided she would listen to her father and have her spine repaired. This is the end of their story. Parents always want their children to let them live vicariously through them. Have you ever been forced by your parents to learn something? Looking back now, how do you feel? In order to live to be 1000 years old, this man insists on locking himself up in a minus 10 degree freezer every day for 30 minutes at a time. But today, because he forgot to set the timer, I locked myself in the freezer for an extra 20 minutes and he got frostbite on his feet. But as luck would have it, he just happened to be sent to Sean's hospital. Sure enough, the rich man suddenly felt a pain in his stomach. The doctors rushed to check him out and found that he had a hole in his intestines. Oh, by another strange disease, they called Sean to operate on him. With Sean at the helm, the operation went very well. But if nothing has gone wrong, then something must be about to go wrong. Sean suddenly realized that the rich man's intestinal wall was very thin, like a newborn's, which had led to the development of metacolon, a condition that only babies suffer from. What was going on here? After the surgery, Sean examined the samples, and it turned out that the rich man's cells were more active than normal. At a conservative estimate, his life expectancy had been extended by a full 10 years. The doctors couldn't believe it. After taking turns observing him, they came to the same science fiction conclusion. So it turned out the rich man really wanted to live forever. Six months ago, he spent a billion dollars and made a decision to betray his ancestors. That is to say, he underwent gene editing to optimize his telomerase, the root cause of human aging. It looked like he had succeeded. Two, he couldn't wait to get out of the hospital and extend his wife's life. Two, then the two of them could love each other for a thousand years. He had a bold way of thinking, but even Sean couldn't compliment him. Because genetic modification is a very dangerous thing. Not to mention the fact that he was in this hospital, where nothing ever goes well. As expected, the rich man became critically ill that night. He said both sides of his body had severe pain and fainted instantly. But the strange thing was, the film showed that the rich man was in good condition. The doctors couldn't find the cause of the disease. Even Sean's incredible brain couldn't work it out. In view of this, they came to understand that because of the genetic modification, the rich man now had a disease that has never been documented. So all the doctors could do now was look for diseases with similar symptoms and try to use the same treatment. Once they decided on this approach, Sean immediately gave a feasible treatment plan. But before the treatment could begin, there was another problem with the rich man. His pain had shifted from both sides of his body to his spleen. There was a high risk of spleen rupture, so they needed to operate immediately. But halfway through the operation, Sean realized that the man's nerves were also calcified as a result of the gene editing, which meant he'd be in constant pain. Even if he does live a thousand years, he'll still always be in pain. All the other doctors thought the man was hopeless, but Sean isn't someone to give up so easily. The next moment, countless papers on gene editing came to his mind. Then, all of a sudden, he left the equipment, turned around, walked out of the operating room. When the others found him, he was slowly reading a paper. It turned out that the paper was on how to save the rich man. A doctor once tried to embed DNA in a virus to restore the genome to its original state. 
But by doing so, the gene editing that the man had previously spent a billion dollars on would be a waste of money. The tycoon decisively rejected Sean's proposal. Compared to the temptation of immortality, he would just endure the pain. But then his wife shook her head, rather than the danger of gene editing, and then threw himself into the freezer for 30 minutes a day. It is clear that the best way to maintain good health is to exercise properly. You're the one who embraces change. So change to the person who can be happy with me. However, in the face of his wife's sincere words, the tycoon ultimately chose to break her heart. But is longevity really that important? There's something else that I have to give up. He has lost his mind, and his wife is just an obstacle on his way to immortality. But ask yourself, if it were you, what choice would you make? And his fiancée didn't know what to do. 